Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to another day of art with Mrs. R. So because it is the month of February, we are going to be doing some art that has um, hearts and different things in it. So it's a flying heart balloon uh, drawing that we're going to do today. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you and show you the supplies that you're going to need for this project. So you can see here we have our drawing paper, watercolors, Sharpie, pencil, crayons, and uh, water for our watercolors. So go ahead, if you don't have those things with you, um, go ahead and push pause and go ahead and gather all the supplies you're going to need. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started. I'm gonna pull away the supplies I don't need right now. Put those to the side. So <clears throat> you're going to go ahead and do um, turn your paper landscape like this. Okay. And landscape is the wide way across. Okay. Up and down is portrait like this. For the long ways up and down, the long way across is called landscape. And that's what we want to see today landscape on your paper. A little bit smaller. Okay, so we are going to draw six hearts on our paper. And you can pretty much put them wherever you would like. Um, for me, I'm going to draw my six hearts just kind of randomly on the page like this, move them on the edge and some halfway peeking out like that. And then some in the middle of my page, and they all don't have to be the same size either. They can be uh, different sizes too. So there are my six balloons, hearts. Um, now, if you want to make yours um, a different shape or you don't want to do six, you don't have to do that many. You can make a couple of just big ones. It's kind of up to you. Okay, so go ahead and make sure that you have six hearts somewhere on your page. And if you want to change anything about your hearts, this would be the good time to do it. Okay, so if you're still drawing your hearts, go ahead and press pause now on the video so that um, you don't get behind. Okay, so you've got your six hearts on your page. Now, you know, on the bottom of balloons where they tie it off, there's this little piece of extra balloon that looks like a little triangle after it's just hanging there. We're gonna put those on the bottom of each one of our balloons where you can see the bottom. So it's a little triangle. Um, you can see it looks just like, just like that, okay? Put them on the bottom, triangles on the bottom of each of your balloons, okay? So go ahead and press pause until you have all of those down at the bottom of the balloons that you can see the bottom of. Like this one won't have one because it's kind of peeking out from the bottom of the page here. Okay, so we're going to add these little um, pieces to the corners. And they kind of look like, um, I would say, like a, a wide upside down view or a moon. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and add these to the corners of our balloons. And it can be on either side. Um, it doesn't really matter. And they can be, some can be bigger, some can be smaller. It's kind of up to you. Um, I think like little moon shapes, don't they? So I'm gonna put those on my balloons like that. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to put those. And what these are are reflections. Um, if like say the sun was above us um, and it sh was shining down, um, you would see that little reflection of the light um, on something. So we're trying to do that same idea with our balloons, okay? So go ahead and press pause until you put all your little moon shapes in the top left or right corner of your um, balloons that we're drawing. All right, now the last thing we're gonna need to do as far as drawing with our picture shapes, we're gonna add strings to our balloons and you can have them going any direction you like. Um, they can be long or short. Um, you know, just kind of any way you want them to go. Um, it's kind of up to you. So 
So there are the strings on my balloons that look like that. And like I said, yours can go, you know, crazy all over the page and looped and whatever you want to do. Okay. So go ahead and add that and make sure that you um, have one for every single, single balloon that's shown. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so while you do that, go ahead and press pause and make sure that you get that piece done. Okay. So of course, the final part um, that we need to do is our Sharpie. So you can go ahead at this point and get your Sharpie out. And I have my scrap paper underneath to catch any of the marks for my Sharpie that I would get on there. Okay. So I'm going to just trace um, around all of my parts like that. And trace the string too. And then this one here that's in the corner. I'm going to trace that one. That. And keep going here. Make sure I trace all the pencil lines that I've added to my picture. That's the one good thing about having um, the extra paper underneath this one sheet, because you can see here, I got off the paper. Now, if you were drawing on a regular, like on the table and you didn't have that protection sheet underneath, you could easily get sharp on the table, which is not good because it's really hard to get off. So just something to think about. Okay, so this last one. And if you get off the lines, your pencil lines, it's no big deal. Um, because we're going to erase the pencil lines anyway. They were just a guide for us. So here I am done with my Sharpie of my drawing. Now, if you're still uh, sharpening all of your pencil lines, then this would be a good place to press pause until you've got that um, part done. Okay. So I am going to go ahead. And I'm going to erase any of the lines that I don't need if I see that are kind of sticking out on my extra eraser right at the moment. So I may not be able to do that, but you guys can go ahead and make sure that you erase all of your um, unnecessary possibilities. Okay. All right. So Here's the fun part. Now we need to decide what color we want to do our hearts. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do red, probably, let's see, um, some kind of a purple, um, some kind of shade of pink, probably. Let me take a look. Let's see what my choices are here. I've got lots of different colors. Um, so let's see, and then maybe, so just pick different shades, Valentine's Day colors, reds, pinks, purples, and all the different shades in between for your picture. And <clears throat> go ahead and get started with coloring. Now, <clears throat> the one thing you're gonna wanna remember um, in your picture, and no, it sounds funny to do this, um, you're going to go and color in all these little moon spaces, these little moons that you made on your hearts, you're going to go ahead and color over those with white crayon because the crayon is going to resist taking on any of the color um, when we go over our water with watercolors later. Um, because of the wax in it, it won't allow the um, watercolor to attach to the paper there. So just make sure that you go over all of those little little moon shapes that we put in the corners of the balloons with a white crayon. Okay. All right. So at this point, if you're not all done with your sharpie and doing your coloring in your moons, um, the little tops here that we did with white, I would definitely press pause, um, and then you can catch up with uh, me when you're all done. All right, so I'm just going to go in and color 
each balloon, whatever color I wanted to color it. So this one particular one, I'm gonna make red and then go around that little moon shape. And just pour it in like this. And you don't have to necessarily worry about um, getting every single spot um, colored in because we are going to go in with watercolors later and um, that's going to add some color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little spot open on each, like one of the sides of the, um, the balloons to color them a different color with the watercolors. So you'll see what I mean when we get there. So for right now, I think I'm just going to color in my parts. And you can use as many different colors as you want or as few if you want them all to be red, that's fine. Um, you can color them you know, all pink if you want, but we're trying to stick with Valentine's Day colors. So pinks, reds, <clears throat> purples, things like that. So, and again, I'm going to leave a little bit on the side here to color in with my watercolors. And then I think I'm going to do um, pink here. So just going around. This. <clears throat> Oh, color in my hearts. So again, at any time, if you feel like I'm um, getting ahead of you, make sure to color that little part there too. I forgot on my other ones, I'll have to go back. Um, feel free to just push pause and you can work on your own until you get caught up. Mm -hmm. And again, on this one, I'm leaving a little bit of a white edge. And now, I have this one, this one here. And again, like I said, you don't have to make sure that every single square inch of this part is colored in. Um, it'll be fine if it's not, so. Okay. So just keep going around. This. <clears throat> a little bit. So you guys can see that. And then again, I'm leaving a little bit around the edge. Okay, and then the last color. I'm going to use this. It's kind of a between a purple and a pink color. So I really use this color a lot. I like it, so. I use it in a lot of my, um, oops, I forgot to do the phone. I use this in a lot of my art projects that we do together. So got to do the bottoms there, I'm sure I put those. Okay, so that, this one, and try to color in the same direction um, when you color, because it will make it look very neat as opposed to coloring in all different directions, if you can help it. But just make sure um, your coloring, your drawing, whatever you're doing look much neater. Okay, so again, remember, we're going to leave some of the edge open. Yes. Let's leave that part open, I think. And the last one, the last part.
can tell I use this color a lot because I've got it all the way rolled up now. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to replace this color at some point because I use it so much. Okay, so there's that edge of that one. Okay, so at this point, if you are still working on um, coloring in your picture, then make sure that you push the pause button because you want to make sure that you don't get too far behind, okay? All right, so I'm all done with the coloring. So I'm putting my crayons away and my pencil and my Sharpie away because we no longer need those. And I'm gonna get out my watercolors and my water. Back up a little bit so you can see. And then I'm going to, it's fine, it's this ready. So you need water, obviously, and for your watercolors and then a napkin if you need to dab, um, if you get too much um, water on your, sometimes the pink is in the tray, so let's wash that off. Okay, so hmm. I'm just going to hold that over. All right, so on my red balloon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush wet here, and then I'm going to put some color. Just a little bit. So I don't want it, I want a lot of color. I don't want too much um, water. Okay. Whoops. Oops. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to watercolor the edge of this red one. And I'm gonna go over a little bit of the, um, the crayon too. So I'm gonna go a little bit over that and that'll cover some of that and fill in some of those gaps. So see how I'm just going over, get closer so you can see. I'm just going over all of those little spaces. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with this balloon up here. I'm not using a lot of water this time. I'm trying to make it bright. So I'm not putting in um, a lot of water like sometimes we do because I want the red to be very vibrant, which means bright. So I'm going to bright. And if you get off the lines, it's totally okay. Okay, so you can just fill in your heart and Spots that you missed, you can fill it in with your watercolors. Okay, now I'm going to change it up here and I'm trying to think, you know what would be good with? Maybe I'll get my red, I'll get it a little watery so that um, it's not so dark. And then I will do some on my paint here like this. So something. And then just brush it over a little bit like this. So there we go. So just a little space there. You want to add a little bit of that color. So now when um, I go over, I'm just going to take my paper towel. I'm going to dab that a little bit. Um, so now I'm going to go again to the other one and do the same thing. And you're going to notice that the, um, the paint doesn't want to stick. Let's see if I get a close up here. It doesn't want to stick to the, show you. It doesn't want to stick here to the balloon. So what I'm going to do is it, it, I want a little color in the corner, but I don't want all this extra color. So I'm just going to take my paper towel. Okay, 
And then my final one that I'm doing, back up so you can see, um, I'm going to be purple, I think, in these. So I'm gonna grab some purple and then just go in the corners like this, not a lot of water. See how you can see how it's just going in those spots just a little bit. You can spread this over if you want over your, your full heart. So I'm going to go like this. So you can see on the side here, I just this the last one. If you want any of this purple in your picture, then you can just spread this around like this. Okay, and just go to the edges. Now, if you want this one too, um, if you want more of that color, then by all means you can go over it like you could put some purple and spread it around on here. Just be careful not to put too much though. And you can always take your napkin or your paper towel and you can dab off the extra. Mm -hmm. So like on this one, I don't want quite that much. So I'm just going to dab it. But you can see how it makes kind of a cool color on your hearts there. Okay. All right, so let me see. Now we need to do the outside the big part on the outside. So now we need to decide what color we want. I think, hmm, what color? So I mean, blue would look nice. Um, I think I'm gonna do blue, but you could do like purple or uh, even yellow would kind of cool. So it's up to you, but I'm gonna stick with blue and I'm gonna put a lot of water in my blue because I want it to be nice and light. Um, so again, it just depends on what shade you want it to be. If you want it to be nice and bright, then, you know, obviously not as much water, but I'm just going for a light color. I use so much blue. Um, sometimes it seems like I need to get some more, and I need to get some more blue because I use it so much. So I'm really watering down my blue. Um, and that's okay, because we can get, you know, if we run out of a color, we can always get more, so. So I'm just going in with my brush. I'm just lightly going over. I really got a lot of water, you can see in my blue little palette here and putting a lot of water in there because I just want a very um, light blue color. So I'm just going to over it like that. And just continue around. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if you um, kind of do it messy, sometimes it actually looks pretty cool because it's it gives that like watercolors are kind of a, a cool paint to use because they don't give you a lot of definition, which means shape. So it leaves a lot to your imagination, which makes it nice. Okay, so it's gonna keep going. So you can imagine like in the sky when all the clouds are in the sky and like the colors are just kind of all different shades, right? In the blue sky, there's all different shades of blue and white. And so it's kind of how our picture looks after we're done. It's all these different shades of blue. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going. This is the part sometimes it takes a little bit to do all the blue, but that's okay. Just keep going, I just want a light blue. And you can even leave some white spots too, because you, as you know, you know, the sky has a lot of white in it too, so it makes it more look more realistic. So let's keep going here. So you can kind of see how I'm 
doing that, I'm just skipping over some spots and I'm putting a lot of water in my blue. A lot, a lot of water. I think I'm going to add a little bit of purple now. I'm going to start changing the color of the sky. Did you know sometimes the sky has multiple colors in it? So this sky is changing from blue to kind of a purplish blue. So that's what I'm doing. I've mixed a little bit of purple into my blue palette. And now we've got this cool color of mixture of purple and blue. So just keep going. Just keep going with the purple and blue. And then I think I'm eventually going to get to a darker purple as I get more on this side of the page, which will make it look interesting. So, so start putting more purple in there and see what happens. So we're starting to put a darker shade now. Just put over here, just put it in the hearts. Okay. There's no like right or wrong way to do this. Okay, so you can see. It's going to keep going around. So I'm going to add even more purple. Let's make it even. Or as we start going on this side. This, I'm going to start seeing more purple color. So come over here. You kind of blend it together here on the sides. Just keep going around. This. And like I said, you can have some white spots in here because that would totally make sense. So. Just keep going. Just, you know, leaving some of the spots white will make it more airy, I guess. So just like that. Edges. Oops. Okay. So now in this in between part, I'm thinking. I'm going to try to get some of this blue jumping up a little bit in here. And then I'm transitioning a little bit in between here to add some purple. Look like in here. Adding a little bit of purple in here so that we're getting a kind of an in between of the two colors. So, two more spots in here, a little bit more shading. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that, but that makes it more. I uh, make it really watery. Let's see. Let's 
Where did I get my baby? So you can see where it starts to shift from the blue and purple. Really make it watery when you do that so that it's, it makes sense. You know what I mean? It kind of blends really well together. Yeah. And so a little bit more than a little bit of those mixtures of blues and purples. Yeah. So now I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit. Spread that out. Yeah. And okay. So just. Okay, so you can kind of see where the sky is changing colors um, here in our picture. Now, uh, each one of our project stays is definitely going to look different because, oops, let me try that one. because every um, one of us has a different way we want to do it. So you can kind of see how I did my red, my pink, and my purple. And you can see on the page where it starts off as blue, static starts getting a little pinkish and purple, more purple, more purple, to well, it's totally purple. So it kind of changes. So if you like notice in your paper that there's some white spots, if you actually want to go in and add some more color, you can. But I kind of like how this has the different colors. It kind of reminds me of like the evening sky. If you were to stand and look up, how the colors are so different. And sometimes, you know, this guy really does have all those different colors in it, okay? So if you are still painting, you can add as much as you want, take your time on this part, make it fun for you. Um, but I would love to see everyone's drawings. So please make sure that you post those on Seesaw because I definitely wanna see those, um, all of your artwork, so. I look forward to seeing all your projects. I hope you guys have fun doing art today and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. All right, everyone have a great day. Bye.